All right, guys, we're going to be solving the question 27 from the third chapter of the injury mechanics by Miriam. This question was requested by one of you guys. So we need to find the angle theta with the horizontal, which we can see in here, the bottom of the figure, so that the contact force at point B will be one half of the force that we have at point A for the smooth cylinder. So by smooth, the question is referring to frictionless surfaces. So we don't need to consider any friction. And uh, we're going to start with the free by diagram as always. I try to show the x and y axis in here to solve this question. So let's just see what we have in here. So we're going to have the normal force at point A, which will be applied to this surface. So we know that that one is going to be perpendicular to this surface. So it's going to be something like this. We're going to call it NA and it will be perpendicular in here. We're going to have the same story for B and this will be our NB. And obviously we're going to have the weight of this cylinder, which is going to be vertical. So this will be our W or the weight that we have. So uh, we discussed that trick for finding the angle. So now we have uh, this angle here. This is our W or I should show it like this. So we have this angle here and also we know that this angle here is theta. So this will be theta. And based on the trick that we discussed when we have two angles, when the side of each of them is perpendicular to the other one, these two angles are the same. So here we also have theta. So that's probably the trickiest part of this question to find the angle. And also we know that the from the last line of this question, we know that the force at B, which we call it NB or the normal force at B is one half of NA. So that's another given. So that's another equation. And obviously we are in equilibrium. So we're going to use the equilibrium equations that we have for this point or about the uh, center of this cylinder. And we're going to act this question as a equilibrium of a particle. So all we need to do in here is just to resolve each of these forces in x and y component. And at the end, we're going to have sum of all forces in x equals zero. And we're going to have the same story for y. Let's see what we have for x. So for doing that, we also need some information about the angle. So we know that this angle is 45 degrees, which means this angle is 45 degrees. And as I said, we're going to have a right angle in here uh, based on the fact that every tangent on the perimeter of the circle would be perpendicular to the radius. So that's why we have it. The other angle would be 45. We're going to have exactly the same story on the other side. We know this is 45 too. So we should be able to find X and Y components in each of these. So let's start with the NA. So from now on, I'm just going to put NB one half of NA. So let's start with the NA. So this will be the X component of NA. So first of all, it's positive since it acts along positive axis. So it will be positive and it will be cosine of 45 degrees. The good thing about this question is this that the value for cosine and sine for 45 degrees is the same. So from now on, it really doesn't matter if we pick sine or cosine, but like going with this angle that I'm show, showing in here, we're going to get basically Na cosine of 45 degrees and Y. And let's move on to the X component of the, the other one. This will be in this direction. So the other one would be actually negative. So minus the force this time is one half of Na and same story cosine of 45 degrees. And we also have the X component of W. I'm going to show those in this color. So with green and we can see that that one is also acting along negative X axis. So minus W and it will be sine of theta. So that would be equal to zero. And we can kind of write it down in this way. W sine of theta is equal to 
and a cosine of 45 minus 1 half. So basically, we're going to get 1 half of a and a cosine of 45 degrees. So that's everything for the x component. Let's move on to the y equals 0. This will be the y component of na. So it's upward. So we'll be positive since acting along positive y axis. So na this time sine of 45 degrees. And for the nb, this is also positive. So plus 1 half of na. sine of 45 degrees and for the w that would be negative since it's downward or it's acting along negative y-axis i shouldn't say downward so minus w cosine of theta so this will be equal to zero and if we just bring the cosine w cosine of theta on one side we're going to have and a plus one half, which is going to be three half sine of 45 degrees. Now we have two equations that we are interested in the theta. The question is asking for tilt theta. So all we need to do it here just to divide these two. So on the left side, we have W sine of theta over W cosine of theta is equal to Uh, one half of n a cosine of forty five over three half of n a sine of forty five. As I mentioned, sine of thirty five and cosine of forty uh, sine of forty five and cosine of forty five is the same value, so we can cancel these out. N a will be cancelled out, and on the left side we can cancel out. So basically, we have sine over cosine, which is tangent of theta, and also we can cancel out. The twos in here, so one third. So the theta that we are looking for is the tangent inverse of one third. So let's just calculate this. Tangent inverse of one divided by three. So that's going to be 18.43 degrees. And the final answer for this question. Hope everything was clear. Let me know if you guys have any questions and you guys take care. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.